All right, in this lesson, we're gonna start our understanding of what needs to be done prior to or as we are starting to obtain clients, okay? As we obtain clients, what things do we need to keep in mind, whether or not we take them on or not? And the key thing or misunderstanding that people have is, oh, we're gonna take everybody. Well, in the auditing industry, because of the risks involved and the possible lawsuits that could occur, you don't want to take everybody. You only want to take people that fit what you're doing and you believe would be a good fit for the organization and the entity that you represent. So let's talk about what things we need to understand when we look at client acceptance for a new client. So these are new clients. So the successor auditor, which would be you if you if you're getting a new client so you as a successor auditor should make certain inquiries of the predecessor auditor so the old auditor before accepting the engagement now that's not always easy but as a new auditor before you take on the client you need to make inquiries of the predecessor auditor to find out why is the change happening okay because no auditor will let their clients go if they're a good client okay now this could be a fee issue where the client just says hey we're going somewhere else because your fees are outrageous that could be the issue but we want to verify that with the other auditor okay so we're doing this to evaluate engagement risk now what is engagement risk this is the risk that we would have by taking me on on the engagement Okay, so what risk would occur if we took on the engagement? And this is not necessarily the wrong opinion risk. This is, hey, what things are gonna happen if we take this client? Maybe we're short staff, maybe we don't have enough staff, maybe, you know, what things could go wrong in this engagement? That's what we're trying to evaluate. And if it's good within our tolerance level of engagement risk, then we may take on the client. So things to think about is management integrity. What's management's integrity? Are they honest? If they're dishonest, there's a better likelihood that they're committing fraud, and we don't want to be involved with anybody that's committing fraud, okay? Disagreements with management. Were there any disagreements with management, uh, especially from the particular part of the predecessor order? Did they have disagreements with management? That's something that we should ask. Uh, we should ask about any communication about fraud with those charged with governance. Charged with governance means the board of directors. Had the predecessor auditor had discussions about fraud, uh, maybe fraud that was going on within the organization with the board of directors? And if they did, what were their conversations like? What did they do? What did they not do? What issues do we need to face if we have to, uh, have, if we have, to have a conversation about fraud with that uh, board of directors? Communications regarding internal control deficiencies or material weaknesses. So we're gonna ask about, hey, what about their internal controls? Or do they have good internal controls? Do they not have good internal controls? Um, what is their material weaknesses? What are some of the weaknesses that they have in their internal controls? Again, all of this data helps us get better idea of engagement risk of this client. Okay, And then the last thing, predecessor auditor's understanding of why the change occurs. Hey, let's be front straightforward with this. Why do you think your your client is now coming to us to do their audit? And that might give you a good picture of why the change occurs. If the change occurs, if, if the new client says, hey, it's because of their fees, but then you talk to the auditor and the auditor said, no, there's this issue, this issue, this issue, and this issue, and when we try to do this, they want to do that, and then this, and those are all issues, and those issues are important to understand because that has an impact on, on whether or not we want to take on this client. Because if there's a lot of fraud, maybe we don't want to take on the client. The risk doesn't outweigh the reward. The reward would be the audit fees. The risk is too much for the audit fees, so we might pass on this client. Okay. Now, other tasks that we might be doing at the same time as we're talking with the predecessor auditors, Obtain and review all available financial statements and review them. Make sure that we understand what's going on in their financial statement. Talk to third parties about integrity. We might uh, go to their bank and talk to their bankers, see what their integrity is like. Uh, vendors. We would also we need permission too, but we would do that and then talk with them about that. Keep attention on items of audit risk. So if we feel like there's things that would give us audit risk, what is audit risk? The risk that we will say the audit, uh, the financial statements are clean when in the actuality they are not clean. 
okay? So giving the wrong opinion, if there are things that would have impact on the audit risk, we're gonna keep attention on that. We're gonna review our independence of the client. If we're not independent, then maybe we can't do the, the audit, so we're gonna ask the people that might be doing this audit, are they independent of this client? And then confirm with regulatory requirements or code of professional conduct, so specific industries, maybe they, we need to do specific things or test work in order to meet those needs, and do we even, do we even have the ability to do that? And if we don't, then we might need to pass on this client. Okay, now that's new client. So there's a lot of work that goes into it before we even become, they become our clients. But we do that so that we're not putting money on the table that we're gonna get bitten back later on. Now, what about existing clients? Well, existing clients should go through not extensive like this, but it should go through the same process of whether or not we should continue the relationship with them. Can we still perform the audit? And if we can't perform the audit, then we need to let the client go. And you might say, well, I'd never do that. Well, what about if these things happen? New sectors and industries, they go into a new sector we've never audited, we don't know anything about it, and it would cause us issues if we did try to do it um, and it backfired, okay? Or maybe we're going into a new direction. Maybe we did aerospace engineering as an audit client industry, and now we're moving away from there because we've lost a lot of our big clients, and so we really don't have the personnel that has the experience in that, Okay, um, management's relationship. How's manager's relationship with the client? If it's not good, then maybe we don't want the client because if it's not good, that means they're gonna make our life much harder when we're trying to do our work and do, do our job. What about cost? Maybe they're not meeting the cost of the audit. Maybe we're spending more than we're taking in. Well, we need to make that into consideration. And then audit risk. Is the audit risk getting too high? Maybe we specialize in clients underneath $10 million and this client has now moved into the $15 million. Maybe it's too big for us and we need to move them into the, maybe the big firms or the mid-tier firms. Those are decisions, hard decisions because they means money out the door, but we don't want to put ourselves in an audit risk where we're giving the wrong opinion and then costing us a huge liability later on. So we have to weigh that with the audit risk. Don't assume you can continue the relationship, okay? So unlike a marriage, don't assume we can continue with a relationship. At some point, they may outgrow us or we may outgrow them and we need to let them go and that's okay. It's the hardest decision because it's revenues and it hits the bottom line. But at the end of the day, it also means that you, are you thinking about the business in a long-term sense or are you thinking about your auditing firm in a short-term sense? So this lesson is about new client acceptance. How do we accept new clients? What things we should think about as well as also understanding our existing clients and what we need to do to make sure that our existing clients meets, meets our bill for the services we would provide to them in the future. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you like what you saw, make sure you press the thumbs up button that's right below here. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave a comment or that question in the comment box below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you press the subscribe button. It's just below me. Hey, if you want more videos like this, make sure you go to www.patrickleemsa.com to see more videos like this or if you just wanna learn more about accounting. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.